Hey guys, it's Tim, and this is Pro Wrestling Unlimited. We're here with the SmackDown Live review. We've got Nick with us. What's going on, Nick? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another review of this time SmackDown, not Raw. I don't know why I said another. We've only <laughs> done one. So for everybody that is unaware, these reviews will go up on Patreon first. You will get the audio recording of this. That way you can actually download it. It will go up the night of on Patreon, and then the next day it will go out on YouTube. And all you have to do is be a Patreon subscriber for as low as $1, and you will get the audio recording the night of. We're also going to put out the audio recordings of the actual podcast every week and the pay-per-view reviews for Patreon patrons. I guess that's how you say it, patrons on Patreon. Anyways, let's start talking SmackDown Live. All right, let's do it. Let's talk SmackDown. So unannounced they had michael cole there it was like nobody knew like at least fans or whatever we didn't hear this prior that michael cole was going to be there michael cole Corey graves and byron saxton were on commentary and cole said that tom phillips would be out for a couple weeks on assignment i have no clue what that's supposed to mean but we're i have no Ma idea either <laughs> but we're getting michael cole for the next couple weeks on smackdown yeah sounds great so Brian, i'm fine with it michael cole's gotten a lot better that's true so Daniel Bryan comes out to huge guest chants in his home state of Seattle. Crowd was loudly chanting for Bryan as usual when they do when they're in his hometown. He announced there will be a six-woman tag team match later on in the night. He reiterated that Jinder has a big announcement for Survivor Series and Dolph Ziggler will be taking on Bobby Roode. Brian, pretty uh, uh, right off the bat, you got a pretty good gist of what the big stuff was going to be right. tonight. I kind of like the way they did that. They were like, hey, this is what we're doing tonight. Boom, boom, boom. That's so you know what you're expecting. Unlike SmackDown, or I mean Raw, where you always have people just come out and ramble. I mean, they did ramble ramble a little bit here once uh, Brian called out Sami Zayn, but right. So he calls out Sami Zayn, who he said he was disappointed in for his actions at Hell in a Cell, and Brian said he wanted Zayn on the beginning of SmackDown tonight before anything can like interrupt it. He wanted Zayn to tell his side of the story. Brian asked how Zayn could be smiling and dancing coming out here after, after you know, just always being the good guy for 13 years and doing what he's supposed to do. Zayn said he was still the same old guy. He was still a great guy, but he's going to take ownership of his career. And if that made him a bad guy, then he's going to have to be a bad guy. I mean, but he's going to, you know, take his career into his hands and not leave it up to the fans anymore. Bad guy Sami Zayn is what we've really been waiting for, and I'm quite uh, quite glad to have him. I like bad guy Sami Zayn. I, I think it's going to be fun. I liked it, too. He came off like like the way he was like during his entrance, both here and in the main event with uh, Kevin Owens in the tag team match. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, he just came out. He was The way he was – like he usually dances when he comes out, but he did it in like a – I guess you could say cocky manner. Which like a, like a, worked. he was actively aware of what the fuck he, how he was doing it. Yes, like it, it was just it, like not overly cocky, but it was like fuck it, I don't care what everybody thinks anymore. I'm just coming out here jamming. Yeah, no, absolutely, I dig it. So Brian, uh, oh, I already said that. Uh, um, Zane said that they were both gifted performers, and then corrected himself, saying, "Wait, wait, wait, I'm still a gifted performer," <laughs> and acknowledged that the company will not let Daniel Bryan wrestle. That. Drew and then I don't know if you crowd. I don't know if you took to Twitter, uh, but I don't know if you what I don't know if you saw what Daniel Bryan had said on Twitter. No, I did not. No, well, I can pull it up for you. Um, so basically, uh, the WWE creative humor. It's a Twitter page said, right. "Quote: I'm still an in-ring performer. Uh, you're not anymore until September." Uh, Daniel Bryan just replied to that and says, "Some things are better left unsaid." <laughs> I mean, so, he's, got, uh, he's got one year left. His contract supposedly expires in either next August or September, like end of August, early September. I don't know. We, uh, we'll have a separate video to talk about if we want to see him wrestle again because it's conflicting. But let's continue okay. on with SmackDown. So Sammy said that he could still wrestle and um, Daniel Bryan can't. And this started some Sammy sucks chants from the crowd. Sammy called Bryan a once-in-a-lifetime partner the best of their generation, and he spent his whole career trying to catch up to him. Now, Brian was the last person he wanted to be like because, after all, Brian ended up a housewife. He also ended up calling... Oh! Yeah. He called Brian... Fucking got him. He also, also called Brian a hypocrite 
because Bryant's whole career in the WWE is trying to overcome the authority against him and trying to put him down. And now Daniel Bryan's the authority. Absolutely. Sorry, I had to sneeze right there. That's why my mic went completely silent. Oh, I'm sick. For those that didn't know, I'm sick (laughs) as shit. So Brian was pretty uh, pissed off at this time. He balled up his fist, but Kevin Owens came out. Owens agreed with Sami Zayn on the housewife comment, calling him Mr. Bella. Mr. Bella. Nice. Brian That'll said, rustle some jimmies in the SJW community. Oh, yeah. Brian said, said that uh, only Owens only cares about himself, never really cared about Sami Zayn until Sami was able to help him. Brian always did what he thought was best for the fans. And then they once again said that he only does what's best for business because he's the authority. There you go. Zane then realized Owens was right. And then the two kind of just got in Brian's face, kind of teased like, hey, if you want to do something about it, you do it. You you come at us. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Zane came off amazing in this segment. Like he wasn't like over overly cocky. He wasn't overly heelish. But he just, this new Sami Zayn was great. I loved it. Yes, absolutely. So we go to commercial, come back, and we have a, oh, no, no, no. We had um, Daniel Bryan, before we went to the commercial, Daniel Bryan said that he was going to find two people on the SmackDown roster to take on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the main event tonight. And he didn't say who it was going to be, but that he would find some worthy opponents. And which I, uh... I have something to say about that when we get to the uh, main event day. Gotcha. So we go to commercial. We then go to commercial. And then we come back and we get a six-woman tag team match. It was Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Naomi taking on women's champion Natalia, Tamina, and Lana with Carmella on commentary. Pretty normal match. It was about eight, less than ten minutes. I think it was maybe around eight minutes long. Naomi made the hot tag. Charlotte got in some chops. She went for a big boot on Lana. And in the and Charlotte, Becky, and Naomi were victorious over the women's champion, Tamina and Lana. Nothing nothing really like, oh, standout match or anything. It's just one of those normal, you throw six people in there and you get a, you get a match. Yeah, I mean, that's how the women's division has kind of been treated as of late. It's just like, who do we got? Who do we got? All right, we got these guys? Perfect. A six-man match? Bam. Bada boom. How you doing? We're done. Cool. Women's division set. But but yes. but even but but with saying that though, at least on SmackDown, we see all the women on the roster. So that's a plus though with SmackDown. That's true. That's so, quite true. So then we go backstage. Brian tells Owens and Zayn that literally everyone in the locker room came up to him wanting to punch them in the face, wanting to be their challengers, and he ended up finding Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura to be their opponents later on in the night. We then uh, go for it. That was just so fucking. I fucking hate this shitty, weird, put together tag team. Of Daniel Bryan, or I mean, of Nakamura and Orton. Randy Orton and Shinsuke. Yeah, it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> it's boring. Anyways, so then we had something that I found boring: Pulp Fashion. You're fucking. You're a fucking goddamn monster if you don't think that's funny. I, I, I found, like, the first episode of these fashion files amusing, and after that, I was like, really? This is it? So anyways, the Ascension were sitting there at a table, presumably being in, interrogated. Victor noted how awkward it was that Fandango hadn't said anything in a couple of hours. Fandango told them to cool. He kind of was trying to act like the Fonz, even though the Fonz was happy days, not Pulp Fiction. And then Connor mentioned that they jumped the shark, which made himself and Victor cackle. Breeze came in and took a little bite of a cheeseburger, as they called it, Paris, a Royal Rumble with cheese. The Ascension wondered how they could, couldn't could have figured out the 2B case yet, and then Breeze all of a sudden just collapsed on the floor. That's how it happens. That's what, that's what McDonald's does to you. It's called <laughs> cardiac arrest. Fandango said Breeze was allergic to pickles, so the Ascension gave Fandango a giant syringe and told them, hey, got adrenaline in it he's gonna, you're gonna pump up his adrenaline you gotta put it right here in his chest you just gotta stab it right in there and, and Jesus yeah and um so breeze realized they finally got breeze up they realized that the briefcase had been stolen the one that they got i think it was the well, last time we had fashion files i don't remember i don't remember how long it's been and the ascension said they were happy because this meant that they can continue 
because and then Brizongo just walked away. So we didn't find out what two B was, and that means we're gonna get more damn fashion files. We know exactly what the fuck two B means. Two B. This is gonna be the Bludgeon Brothers. They're supposed to debut on Halloween night. And honestly, that just feels too stupid in eighties to me. <laughs> anyway, it's, I hate it, and I'm sick to my stomach. Yeah. So then we had a like minute and a half match. Sin Cara ended up defeating U.S. champion Baron Corbin. So, like, what does this mean? Sin Cara. Sin Cara push confirmed. Sin Cara push confirmed. Sin Cara, new U.S. champion, number one contender. Like, what the? F- confirmed. Confirmed. Reporting it now. Confirmed. Oh Lord, don't say that now. Anyways, it was pretty much you know Baron went in there thinking, oh, I'm just gonna beat the crap out of this guy really quick, and he got beat really quick. Nothing. Yeah, nothing real. Nothing much really else to say. Yeah. No. I mean. R.I.P. fucking Corbin. <laughs> so we go backstage and Renee Young's interviewing the Usos. Usos. Uh, they said it's like Christmas morning. Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin had jumped in to inform the Usos that they would be the champions really soon. They acted like they wanted to fight right now, but they were just toying with the Usos and then offered a handshake. Usos laughed it off and were able to shake their hands, but Gable and Benjamin kind of did the cool guy pull away before they can shake the hands. Usos had every reason to beat these two up at the time, but they didn't. We then got a Bludgeon Brother promo. This time they were out in the woods. They said some stuff, and I couldn't really gather exactly what they said, and then they smashed their hammers onto the ground, and then they made it clear. They made it, like, obviously clear. Their name is the Bludgeon Brothers. It's stupid and boring, and I don't understand. And Luke Harper is so much better than this. Yeah, he, is. Remember, he doesn't deserve this pain. Remember the freaking TLC match? or I can't remember if it was TLC or just a ladder match that he had with Ziggler a few years ago at TLC. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. I do remember. So then, Shinsuke Nakamura came out to make a Survivor Series, yeah, Survivor Series challenge. We had reported previously this was going to be Brock Lesnar, Pending, they didn't change the plans, and they didn't. Nakamura came out talking, or not Nakamura, Mahal. Mahal came out talking about how he had just got back from a big press tour in India, and the fans in India really know how to treat their heroes, and he came off as a big a big hero in India. He then said that he's here, he's a workhorse, he wants to show that, that he's the better champion, the most dominant champion in WWE, and then said that he was challenging the beast. He was challenging... Brock Lesnar. So, it's going to be Brock Lesnar versus, versus why do I keep saying Shinsuke, versus Jinder Mahal at Survivor Series, but no titles on the line. That isn't that just the dumbest fucking thing that WWE has ever come up with? I don't understand it. I don't know why. You know do you it, have nothing better to do? You know what makes it even stupider is they want Jinder to look good going into this India tour. But Survivor Series is like two weeks before the India tour, and he's gonna. I don't see him beating Brock. No fucking way in hell he beats if, Brock. No. If they keep unless, up, unless Strowman has something to do with it, or Joe. Other than that, there's no fucking way he's beating Brock. I mean, unless, and if he does, I will. I, I will give everyone that predicts that money. How about this one? A guy called into uh, Wrestling Observer Live today with Brian Alvarez and said. I'm going to predict it now. The Shield screws Brock Lesnar. And then in January, from January, February, and then WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar takes on each member of the Shield until he gets to Roman at Mania and then loses. That sounds fucking believable. It does sound believable. Like, literally, he can he can get screwed at Survivor Series, not work December, take on either, either Ambrose or Rollins at, at Rumble, then take on the other one at the whatever February pay per view is going to be. They they may or may not be getting a March pay per view, and then April eighth take on Roman and lose. Like this guy that called in, I was like, damn, he may have actually called it. But at the same time, the Shield is supposed to be um, the Shield is supposed to be baby faces, so that would be a too much of a heel move to do. Eh, you never know. Yeah. Anyways, so we go to break after the break. Oh. Never mind, I missed the spot. Sorry. AJ came out after he challenged Brock Lesnar. AJ Styles interrupted. Styles appeared to, you know, come out and the crowd was loudly behind Styles. Mahal repeated that he was challenging Lesnar and didn't want Styles out here. He wasn't getting a title shot, this and that. 
And then <clears throat> Mahal said that he had beat every worthy contender and called AJ Styles a loser. Styles True. said Style Style said Mahal must have not or must have not had a problem defending his title against him. He told Mahal that he belonged at the, or Mahal said that AJ belonged at the back of the line. Mahal undid the buttons on his shirt like he wanted to fight. And then Styles attacked That'll him. That'll happen. Styles then kind of tried to attack him, chased him out of the ring, and Mahal and the Singh brothers ran off. So it looks like they are teasing that AJ is going to be the next challenger, but it's not going to be at Survivor Series. It'll be at whatever December pay per view we get. But the weird thing is, you're gonna you're gonna say, oh, AJ's the next guy that should deserve a championship match against Jinder, but he just lost last week clean to Baron Corbin. Who, oh, uh, dude. <laughs> I don't get WWE nine percent of the time. Anyway, so we go to break, come back, and Ginger and the Singh brothers they just barge into Daniel Bryan's office. Said that they wanted uh, AJ Styles. He said that I'll fight him, but I won't fight him tonight. And then um, he goes, "Never mind, never mind." Sunu will fight him next week. And Daniel Bryan said, "Fine, if that's what you want to do, we got a match and confirmed." And then he said that match would be phenomenal. And then just started laughing because Daniel Bryan's great that way. Daniel Bryan is I don't think Daniel Bryan really knows where he is anymore. I don't think Daniel Bryan really gives two shits what he's doing anymore. As long as he's doing what they ask of him and doing pretty much no more than what is asked of him until he's able to leave. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, he doesn't you couldn't tell, especially like when they're in the ring. Yeah. When they're cutting on promos in the ring, he's 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 doing his best. But when they're just backstage in like the quote unquote general manager's office, if you want to call it that. You can tell half the time he's just goofing or whatever. <clears throat> so then we go and we get Dolph Ziggler versus Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode gets a huge pop here in Seattle. And Ziggler won with a schoolboy holding the tights. Pretty much, you know, same thing that happened at Hell in a Cell. Ziggler tried to use the tights, got rolled up by <clears throat> by Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode used the tights. That's why we got the rematch tonight. During the match, Ziggler took a slingshot bump into the ring post, and Cole said, "Hey," or and Cole said, "Hey, that's the same thing that happened to Cesaro, except it was less than a month ago." Oh, oh, that's right. He goes, he goes, that's the same thing that happened to Cesaro on Monday. Knocked out his teeth, but actually knocked him out of no mercy. Anyways, they then announced that in fact, this coming Monday on Monday Night Raw in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Brock Lesnar would be there to pretty much accept or deny the challenge of Jinder Mahal. And they didn't say if Jinder would be on hand for Raw or not, but they did They did put him in the graphic. So, I mean, if Jinder's there, cool. If he's not, it doesn't really make two differences. So then Aiden English was walking backstage in a pretty awkward segment. He's singing. He sings towards this girl, and she kind of blushes. He then sings towards these two guys, and... They kind of don't pay any attention to them as they're playing on their phones. And then the New Day comes up. Well, it was really, it was just uh, Xavier started playing his trombone. The two guys started dancing with him instead of acknowledging English. And that was pretty much it. Rusev then interrupted, said that there was no more New Day, only Rusev Day. Kofi Kingston wondered why it was Rusev Day again. But they celebrated anyways, playing the trombone as they backed away. English was about to sing the Rusev Day song, and then Rusev stopped him. Love me some good old Rusev Day. <laughs> then we had the main event. It was Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, I'm asking you guys here in the comments, did they change Sami Zayn's music, at least like the beginning of it? It sounded a little different to me. Like, Kevin Owens came out to his music, then he like walked maybe halfway down the ramp, Pointed back up, and then Sammy's music hit. But it, I don't know if it was just because I wasn't paying 100% attention during their entrances. But it did sound a little different. So maybe I'm just, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you guys think Sammy's, uh, the beginning of his theme song sounded a little different. But in the end, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn did defeat Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, at one point, Randy Orton went for a cover in the ring, but Owens broke it up and gave him a super kick. He also tried to do his draping DDT. Instead of in the ring, he tried to do it from the apron to the outside of the ring on Sami Zayn. That didn't work, so then he threw Sami Zayn through the announce table. Um, Appropriate. Pretty much. Um, 
Later on, Owens tossed Nakamura into the steps and jumped on the apron. This distracted the referee, allowing Sami Zayn to give Orton a huge low blow, the Luva kick, and then pin Randy Orton. Good match with a real good, you know, heel Sami Zayn finish. Afterwards, the two guys uh, ran out of the ring. They went to gorilla position and started getting in. Um, they got in Daniel Bryan's face really fast, saying, hey, we got ourselves a welcoming committee. They asked Bryan what he had in store for them next week. They were like, hey, we'll take on a handicap match, lumberjack match. It don't matter what you give us. Give us something for next week. And Bryan said it wasn't up to him. It was up to Shane McMahon. And then Michael Cole lets us know that Shane McMahon will be returning next week on SmackDown Live. After this, I thought something was going to happen after this with um, Orton and Nakamura because they kept they kept cutting to Orton and Nakamura like just looking pissed off. So I thought Orton was maybe going to like attack Nakamura or something, but nothing really happened with that. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn then came back out on the ramp and started just yelling nonsense until Kevin said that he and Sami were the best and that Sami Zayn was his best friend, and that ended SmackDown. It was a decent show. Yeah. I mean, there was some stuff that was like really like the Aiden English, New Day, freaking Rusev stuff wasn't really needed. I mean, I know they've been they've been pushing Aiden English a little, so they wanted to get him on the show. You had to find something for the New Day. But, I mean, overall, it was True. an okay show. They got everybody on there that they needed. And, yeah, that was SmackDown. Nick, you got any closing comments on SmackDown this week? Uh, not about SmackDown. Just want to say thanks to everyone on Patreon that's listening to this tonight. Thanks to everyone on YouTube that's listening to this now. Uh, you guys are great. I love you. Um, be safe. Yeah, so that's going to do it. Again, if you guys want to get the early recording of this on audio, not video, through YouTube, you can subscribe and become a patron, patron on Patreon. So as $1, you will get the audio recordings of all of our reviews and our podcast. So go over to patreon.com slash PWUnlimited. And if not, you can catch these the next day, the next morning on our YouTube channel, Pro Wrestling Unlimited on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere there's social media. And that's going to do it. Have a great night, guys. Good night, everybody.